Hi, I'm Bill Ritchie again. Uh, someone asked a question, what's the movie about? Well, uh, frankly, it's somewhat autobiographical. In other words, you might say it's based on fact. This actually happened. That's actually me on the cover. I made a picture of myself with my dusty uh, outfit, the name of the main character in the movie. The story is about uh, an art professor who's been working hard for about 30 years and he's invented a way to make a little portable press so he can do outreach programs, that kind of thing. So this, the movie opens in a second grade class and he's th thrilling the students with all these uh, printmaking magic and so forth. He goes back to his university campus and he has his job and he has his typical kind of conflicts with uh, higher ups, the administration and so forth. Uh, one of the students in the class is kind of a spoiled brat, rich kid, uh, son of the, the campus Don, the godfather of the campus. Anyway, he's a real troublemaker and uh, not happy with the way the professor is teaching his printmaking classes and so he takes it upon himself to invent a new printmaking technique with a 45 Magnum pistol. In other words, he shoots a hole in a pile of prints and calls it an addition. Well, this causes a big furor. And on top of that, one of his etches, his precious new uh, big etching presses, power driven, motorized, etc., uh, mangles a student's hand. And so he's sued all over the place. The university's sued. Everybody's mad. And he's all distraught, of course, and having a breakdown over the whole thing. And then he has a fall on a bike. It cracks his head and he's sent off to an island to recover. On the island he slowly recovers but he's got this tick and he can't talk correctly because of the brain damage. Uh, only by wiping on a plate, and that's where the title came from, Swipe, uh, can he manage to make a full sentence. Well, uh, he gets along on the island, starts to make friends in the island. They like him, he likes them, etc. And uh, one of his old friends from campus comes back and uh, they talk about some interesting thing that's developing on the campus and that there's a rumor of a sunken treasure ship out in the bay and uh, they form a kind of an archaeology club to find out what this uh, ship was all about. Um, things are going along and the man becomes uh, a librarian. He seems to be well suited for managing a library so he lo manages the local library and they give him a house to live in. It's all very nice and he's recovering, he's getting better at talking and he picks up the use of an Apple computer while he's at it. So he's writing books and plays and uh, some of the other people from the university come trickling up to the island where he's living, uh, drawn there by the beautiful surroundings of, the, of this paradisical kind of island. Um, he manages to write a children's play. Uh, he's remodeling his house and he finds a trunk, a missing trunk from uh, Richard Dana, the famous man who wrote uh, two years before the mast. The missing trunk is the actual fact that he did lose his trunk upon returning to Boston back in 1865 or whenever it was. Uh, anyway, this trunk turns up in this house and that's a sort of a subplot in itself, but it does figure in very importantly because this bad student who is now uh, somewhat remorseful over his treatment of the professor back in the old days comes up and he needs his help and he discovers that he has this precious trunk which is a national treasure worth a lot of money so uh, the guy steals it. Um, there's this kind of fight and then our hero is damaged again and he says this is it I quit so he flies off to Brazil where his wife has been waiting for him. Uh, so he's pretty happy in Brazil getting along. Uh, the club on the island is doing well in fact they discover there's some truth about the rumored uh, uh, missing ship. So we switch back and forth at that time. This is in the last 15 minutes of the movie. Uh, and so we're going back and forth between this northwest uh, island town and Brazil. Uh, in Brazil, a strange thing happens in that he, the, the professor, now retired, uh, sees a woman who's a spitting image of a muse that he's imagined in his head all these years, as many artists do. And uh, sees her and he chases after her and there's this little chase and he catches up and she disappears but leaves him uh, to, in the face to face with this imaginary press that he's known must have existed all the time at the bottom of that bay up on that island. And uh, it has a, a kind of a little happy ending that I'm not going to disclose right now but uh, makes me cry every time I read it. So I I think uh, that about covers the story and I thank you for watching me tell it.
I'm Bill Ritchie.